Hey there, welcome to Mama Bell's Home. This is Cassidy. I am a homeschooling, homemaking mama to seven kiddos. And as you can imagine, with a large family of nine, we have a lot of messes. We spend the majority of our time at home, and so this kitchen needs a good clean. I do this once a week, but I'm gonna go a little bit deeper than I normally do just because it could use it. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and choose my apron. I'm going with this Japanese style apron because I just love how simple it is. It fits great. It's lightweight and no fussing with ties. And of course it has pockets and who doesn't love pockets? And then second up, I go ahead and get my AirPods in because I always am listening to something. I want to learn something or be entertained while I'm cleaning because I feel like cleaning is just such one of those like mindless tasks. Um, and you know, I just, that's how I get my my time in on my audible books and things like that. I don't know if you're a podcast person, audible person, or listen to music when you clean. Let me know down in the comments. I'm interested to see um, who does what. But anyways, now that I've got those two most important things done, my apron and my AirPods with my um, podcast playing, I am going to head and, um, well, giving some potty training snacks and then just clearing off the clutter um I'm not really like cleaning everything all around me I'm just making this kind of like my station before I start doing all of that though I'm gonna make a mess feeding my sourdough starter so that's what you see me doing here I'm just feeding my sourdough figuring all of that out and then we'll get into the cleaning but I felt like this is a part of my process. Um, I don't know if you guys do sourdough or not, but I tend to make quite a mess with the flour and just trying to figure all that out. I'm very new to it. Um, I've killed more sour sourdough starters than I have, um, you know, have it had experience actually making loaves with. So um, again, and that's just, you know, life with seven kiddos and homeschooling, stuff like that. I just have a lot going on. And I feel like sourdough starter um like keeping it alive is just not my forte so we're trying it again we'll see how it goes um so far so good i've made a couple loaves with it but that's neither here nor there you're here for cleaning so let's get into the cleaning now that i have the sourdough starter fed and um you know i've made my mess i'm gonna go ahead and just clean these things up and I'm not doing like a deep clean, deep clean where I'm like really thoroughly cleaning everything. I'm just kind of doing a deep clean in the sense of getting to all the things that I don't normally get to, such as like wiping the walls down, wiping the cabinets down, um, reorganizing, refilling or restocking pantry items, like that kind of stuff that I'm just too busy during the regular day to do so that's what we're going to do when um there's something for me to talk about i will pop back on but for now let's just watch the chaos that ensues as a mom of seven cleaning her kitchen i always like to start with getting the dishes clean i feel like it just feels more clean, less cluttered when the dishes are out of the sink. Not to mention when you're like cleaning off the counters, you're wiping down cabinets, cleaning off the oven, cleaning out the oven, mopping, all of that kind of stuff. Like you need your sink to be empty and you don't want to be splashing the dirty water or anything like that on things. So I go ahead and I start with my dishes. I'm loading up my dishwasher as much as possible and then I'll hand wash the rest. Um, but again, just to clear out that the sink to make sure that you have like a clean space to work as you need to rinse or dump things down the drain. I know it seems like counterintuitive to clean out the sink and like scrub it and everything like that like I'm doing here, but I find that it's just a better way to go about it. So I'll do the deep clean after I'm done with the dishes and then after I'm completely done with everything else, I'll go through and I'll just like wipe it down, rinse everything out to make sure that there isn't any kind of like dirty mop water or you know 
bacteria or any of those things like I'll do like a deep clean I'll stick some ice cubes and lemon peels or whatever down the dish drain or the garbage disposal to freshen that up and make sure that I'm killing out any of those bacteria and things like that like I said so I know it seems counterintuitive and if this is not your preference then I totally get that but this is just how I work I like to complete one whole task before moving on to the next because I do struggle with ADHD I will get distracted and you'll see I'm sure I will still do those kind of things but I like to finish one whole thing before I move on to the next because that way I'm not missing anything I'm not leaving any holes if that makes sense to you so if this is not your preference and you want to wait to do the sink by all means you do what you want to do and what you enjoy doing and what works for you Now that the sink is done, I'm just going to go around and wipe every surface that I can around it, such as the backsplash behind the sink, the walls, the frame for the door there, the cabinets, all of that, just to make sure that everything is getting a good wipe down. Again, with seven kiddos, four of which are tiny little people that put their hands all over everything, I need to make sure that I'm wiping walls, and it is not easy work. This is... A lot of work to do um, while I'm caring for the kids and feeding them and all of the other things. So we're getting it done. I'm going to go ahead and clean out the microwave. Another step that I like to take will be steaming some hot water in there to make it easier. Um, the microwave wasn't that dirty. It had been cleaned recently so I didn't feel the need to do that. But if you have extra grimy kind of stuff, putting a cup of water maybe with a little splash of vinegar or some essential oils, like some lemon essential oils in there, will help break up everything, make it a lot easier to wipe down without having to use harsh chemicals. And it'll just make it smell nice and easier to clean. I believe a big part of having little ones or just kids at home is learning to be flexible and that's what I'm doing here. I'm being flexible, although I would prefer to clean without a baby on my hip, that's what we're doing because he was fussy, it wasn't quite nap time, and he really is entertained by me cleaning. And it's something I've learned after seven kids, um, you know, I can do a lot of things with a baby on my hip. So I'm just going to finish cleaning up the surfaces, the microwave, wiping things down, um, getting things where they got to go, and just slowly working my way left to right. This is something that I've learned a few years ago. I mean, it's something that I've always done, but this is, I just became more strategic about it, and it's working top to bottom, so starting up at the higher cupboards, the walls, the counters, the lower cabinets, and then the floors. And then going from left to right, so starting at the farthest point in the room and working your way around, and that's just what I'm doing. Um, and then moving the mess as I go, kind of that way and just keeping things more organized and um, contained don't worry yes my baby is on the counter but I am staying right there I keep a hand on him at all times so don't worry we're being safe here um, but he was just better you know on the counter like I said he was getting heavy and um, he wanted to stay with mom so I'm entertaining him as I'm cleaning and also just staying close by so nothing happens and little ones um, behind me are keeping an eye on him he got into some applesauce uh, that was left over from one of his sisters and so he decided to eat that um, while I was cleaning I was feeding him and this is just you know life as a mom of seven y'all
now the baby boy is cleaned up and is now going down for his nap I'm gonna go ahead and finish cleaning up these counters before I start on the oven I have to take my KitchenAid in to um, get like serviced because the motor has gone out so I'm just doing a quick wipe down of it before I go put it on the shelf so that I can take it which cleared up some um, space over there in the corner, which I kind of actually quite like. Um, so even if I have the KitchenAid come back in there, I think that I will probably put it away somewhere because it just looks neater without it on the countertops. As I was cleaning my spoon rest, I totally just dropped it on the oven door and broke it. So that was sad, just a quick cleanup, trying to move on without getting caught up in you know the emotions of it. It's not that special, it's just a spoon rest, am I right? Anyways, now that I have went ahead and cleaned off the cabinets, I'm just, again, top to bottom, left to right, and working on the oven now. Um, I need to clean the top of this stove. I do not like glass stove tops. I do not know who invented them. I, this is my least liked stove that I've ever had. It is nice. I do like that it is um, like streamlined and like a very clean look but it's just ridiculous to have to clean. I do not like it. It is one of the tougher things to clean. My favorite by far was my cast iron stove top that I had, a gas one, um, but in Idaho, I don't see as many um, gas stoves as I see electric stoves. Is it, if that's different where you're at, let me know. But if you have a glass top, tell me I'm not the only one that gets frustrated with cleaning this thing. If you are wondering what this crazy person is doing with the vacuum in the oven, let me tell you why, okay? If you have not tried vacuuming your oven before you clean it, you are missing out. It makes it so much easier. I'm not even joking, okay? If you vacuum out all of the debris and the chunks and like even if you get like a scrubby and just kind of like scrub up the, the pieces, the hard pieces and get that cleaned up, your cleaning of your oven is going to go so much easier and it's not going to be a bunch that you have to like wipe up. If you have cleaned out your oven, I know you know what I'm talking about, okay? Getting those pieces and those chunks, like how many times do you have to wipe it out just to get those things up before you even start cleaning, okay? That's what I'm talking about. Anyways, if you have not tried it i want you to try it one time let me know how it works out for you if you vacuum your oven go ahead help me out let these people know vacuum your oven way to go i'm just sneaking a few bites of my breakfast as i'm cleaning because uh mama's gotta eat she needs fuel but also i don't have time to sit down and eat so i'm a stand-up eater or a eat on the go kind of gal and again, I'm just working on my counters, making sure that I'm getting the walls, the backsplash, the countertops, the doors, the drawers, the knobs, all of that, um, especially with, uh, you know, seven kiddos. Like, you got a lot of hands touching things, um, plus my husband and I. So I'm just trying to make sure that I'm getting all the nooks and crannies as much as I can. I do have carpal tunnel, so scrubbing these things makes it a little bit difficult. Um, but I'm just trying to push through as much as I possibly can. There's those sourdough starters and I just kind of wipe these um, containers down for the utensils because we want to be making sure we're wiping down everything. If we're going to do a good deep clean, we're deep cleaning it all, right? Um, and then just reorganizing my utensils in the way that I like. I have certain utensils in certain containers and I'm just, you know, weird like that. And then after I get all of this done, there's some walls that need to be wiped and then we'll move on to restocking and organizing and cleaning up the pantry portion. Okay, you guys, be honest with me, all right? How often do you actually wipe the walls down in your house? 
I feel like the main rooms, like the living room, the school room, places where I see the kids, especially like the face plates, the doors, the door jams, I'm definitely wiping down more, but I don't think I wiped down my walls near enough. I've let the cleaner go ahead and sit on the oven for a little bit now. I'm just wiping it all out. Look at how dirty that is. See what I mean? Like, first of all, a scrub daddy or a scrub mommy and that scrub cleaner is so good. I love it. Also, letting it sit really helps. Um, I'm, not, I'm not doing like a super deep clean. I'm not letting it sit on there for like a couple hours or anything like that. I'm just trying to get up the burnt on stuff or the cooked on stuff so that it can stop stinking when I clean it because again, that carpal tunnel is kicking in. My clock is ticking. I've already been going at this for a while. So I just went ahead and did like a, a quick deep clean without, you know, doing the full deep clean. And then of course a water break because if you see my face in a second as I turn around, you're going to see your girl is a tomato. I am working hard. I am doing this as fast and as quick as possible because we have, you know, homeschool to do. We have all this stuff to do and I'm doing an early morning clean in the kitchen and it's a lot of scrubbing. Okay, so after my water break, checking my phone, checking in with everybody, we're going to get started on the pantry portion and um, just cleaning, organizing, and restocking that. So this area that I'm working on now is my in-kitchen pantry area. I do have a larger pantry area down in the basement where I keep like my bulk goods, my five gallon buckets, canned goods, things like that. Because I'm gonna be honest, this space here is just not enough for our large family of nine. However, I am sure that you can relate to the fact of being a busy mom and not always be the one to clean up the kitchen. Maybe you don't have older kiddos that help you, but in this house, a lot of times, things are just getting shoved places to get them out of the way, and it's just not where they go. And so I'm gonna go through these shelves, and I'm just gonna go and get anything that doesn't belong, put things where they do need to go, and just make it more you know like less decluttered cleaned up organized um restock some pantry items this is actually one of my favorite areas in this house we do not own this house we are renting and so we can't really change um like the tiles and stuff like that that i don't think are cute i think it'd be way better with just like a white background but i do really love the style of it I love that this is true to its character. Like this is a hundred and like five year old house and this is the original cabinetry and that to me is just super cool. And I love how the glass jars um, look on this counter and how it just fits. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna organize, declutter and just clean it all up and make it look beautiful because it just brings me so much joy to see it organized like that and um, having my cookbooks on display and everything. Like I really do. I'm not a huge open shelf concept person, but in this context, I really, really am. Again, I'm just moving top to bottom, left to right, making sure that I'm wiping down all of the jars, getting behind them, um, underneath them, all of that, making sure to get all the grimy little fingerprints and 
things that can happen as you're cooking and touching things or you're a toddler and touching things because this is at their level. They can get into these um, and I get little, you know, cute little fingerprints all over these glass jars, not to mention just food and things that spill and just making sure that everything looks tidy and neat and kind of categorizing my jars in like items. I know it seems like being on my phone a lot in here, but I am making a list of the items that I need. So because I'm going through and I'm organizing and cleaning and restocking, I'm aware of what I have on hand still, what I need more of, and what is getting really low. And so I just went ahead and made a note in my phone to make sure that I am keeping track of the things that I need to pick up at the store next time. pretty it is when everything is all organized and neat I'm still trying to figure out you know how I want it to go but I really do just love this space so much um, I am obsessed with flavored or infused oils and vinegars so don't mind my little collection there but they do make some great marinades and salad dressings okay so here's the thing about kids okay um, their messes quickly become your messes and I don't think that that ever really stops I think that all the way up until at least I have teenagers that I can say this for maybe even adults I'm pretty sure my messes were my mom's messes but what I'm saying is that box was not mine um, she had her own little snack boxes for like when her friends came and slept over or hung out or whatever and I had to put it away I don't know why she didn't put it in the cupboard but anyways now that um, I'm cleaning up the coffee pot and I'm gonna go ahead and put it into the dishwasher run that so that it can be going while I finish up and I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick wipe down of the coffee pot make sure you know all the gunk and grime and splatters are wiped down and then I'm just gonna keep on going again guys top to bottom left to right I'm almost done with the countertops and the different items I still need to clean up the glass here on the French doors and then the floors and we're just getting a ride along again I really appreciate you guys being here cleaning with me if you've enjoyed this video so far would you mind giving it a like and if you're not already subscribed do so I would love to have you a part of our community here um, we do a lot of cleaning grocery hauls I focus on homemaking motherhood um, sometimes I'll focus on homeschool but not a lot I really just want to help moms um, simplify and focus on what matters and that's what we're working on here if that sounds like something you would enjoy then join us if not then I'll see you guys in another video I'm sure and let's just go ahead and finish this up strong right let's get these floors done stay tuned because I do have a little helper the cool thing about the mop that I have it'll like lower down and the kids can help and it is just too cute to miss Our kittens were totally mesmerized by me sweeping and mopping. It was hilarious, but I'm gonna get close and I want you to see. Do you see the purple tint to the dirt? Yeah, that's kinetic sand um, and it was all over the place because toddlers and kinetic sand do not mix, but it's a fun time. So we had a fun time. There was purple sprinkles everywhere. 
and now I'm just gonna go through and clean up these windows I'm only gonna do the inside I'm not gonna do the outside because I do not have time for that I'm just trying to get this kitchen cleaned if you know what I mean sometimes we have to choose our best yes and my best yes was not cleaning outside because I know how I will get I'll get distracted and the things that I'm supposed to be doing today I'm not doing and I'm doing the things that were nowhere near on my list There's just something so attractive about fresh mopped floors, fresh cleaned windows or mirrors that you just, you have to use it. It has to be done. It needs to be touched, right? I'm not saying me personally, but my children love a fresh mop floor and I'm sure it's because it's fresh, it's clean, it's beautiful and I don't mind it's just another quick swipe but it's just one of those things that I've had to really you know work on my heart and my attitude when it came to it of not getting upset when they're just enjoying the hard work that I put into it and I think seeing it as that instead of them ruining my hard work but enjoying it really helped me as a mom and a homemaker now this is the little helper that I was talking about the really cool thing about the O cedar mop is it goes um, it compact like you can unscrew the wand so that it stores down really small and the best part of that is when you have a little one like my little guy here he's um, two almost three actually he wanted to help me mop and I was able to let him do that and in, and in a way that he is capable of doing it and feeling good and he was just so proud of himself and I love him for it and so this is him good job bud okay I'll let you do that spot I'm gonna go get cut you want me to step on it or you want to? I'll do it. Okay. Don't hold it. No, no. Let it go around. You got to hold it loose. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Ready to go. Okay. Another really cool feature about the O-Cedar Spin Mop that I really enjoy, especially as a mom of seven with a tight budget, is that they are machine washable. You can just pop the head off, put it in the washer with some hot water and soap, and you're good to go for a few months. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in learning more about embracing your role and just like practical tips and tools and tricks of um, embracing your role as a mother and a homemaker, then make sure to join me this Saturday October 28th at 10 a.m. I'll have a link down below that you can sign up. We're going to be doing a workshop and I will have a live Q&A at the end of that. So make sure you go ahead and let me know what your questions are, if you have anything specific that you want to talk about. And as always, I really appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you later. Bye!